I'm gonna show you how to create a hacker style tablet that can actually be useful. I know, I know, creating hacker tablet sounds super sketchy, but you'll find out how we can make it much more useful than a basic Android tablet. So let's get started. First, we obviously need a device. In our case, it is a tablet, but at the end of the video, I will try this on a different device as well. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, I will be using Samsung Tab A in our case because I've already had one laying around. It has 1.8 GHz of octa-core CPU which has ARM Cortex cores, 2 GB of RAM and 32 GB of onboard storage. Which as you may have already noticed, this tablet has uh, not top of the line specs. In fact, it is little insufficient for our use case, but we will see how that will turn out. Now we come to the important part, software. At that point, since our main objective is to turn our tablet into a fully functional computer, we can take multiple approaches. Our first approach is the most obvious one, which is running a lighter version of some sort of Linux distro on our tablet. At first glance, this approach may seem easy, but it actually needs some tweaking. Also, it requires a powerful tablet to handle the operating system. Then, we got the second option as a backup plan and that is to use a separate computer and project it onto our tablet. This approach is much more suitable for the lower end devices, but since we had a mid-range tablet, it is hard to guess, so I will be trying both approaches. Starting off with the first one. To install an operating system on our tablet, we will need some apps, and those are Andronix, TermUX, and VNC Beaver. Those may seem much, but they actually enable us to install operating system without rooting our device, which saves us a lot of time and hassle. Once we had all of those installed, the process is pretty straightforward. We start up the Andronix, choose the OS and the desktop environment. It will automatically create the installation command and copy it into our clipboard. Then all we have to do is to head over to the term UX and paste the code. Then it will start installing it. Once the installation was completed, we run the start command dedicated to our operating system. After that, we type vnc server start command to start the localhost. Then we head over to the vnc viewer, create instance on localhost 1, and we got the operating system. It is that easy. Now comes the challenging part, installing the hacker UI, which is edX UI. It is based on Electron and that it is what we use to get those nice movie-like graphics. But since it is Electron based, we need to install Node.js and NPM. And this is the point where this approach shows its weaknesses. See, the operating systems that we have installed are all lightweight and cut down versions. They lack multiple things and this is why we cannot proceed any further. I've previously tried using Alpine, Manjaro, Fedora, Debian, Void and finally the Kali, but unfortunately I won't be able to install Node on them. I really wanted Kali to work but anyways. Then finally I decided to try Ubuntu and it actually worked. So I've installed Git and cloned the Edex UI from its repository. Then I've built it and tried to run it, but nothing happened. I cannot get it to work. Maybe using the modded operating systems in Andronix would help or maybe trying some other OS installation methods work as well. But I am still curious about those, let me know if you have any other suggestions about that. At that point, since I have already spent a lot of time trying to make it work, I decided to move on with our second approach. And it worked really well. Now, uh, let's look at how I did it. First, we need to have Node.js and M NPM installed on our main PC. That way we can run npm scripts inside the edX UI. Then we need to clone the edX UI from its repository, which I will provide link in the description so you can grab it as well. After that we will follow the installation instructions which are very simple. We just head over to edX UI directory and execute npm run install windows command since we are on windows. This command will change depending on the operating system. Anyway. Once the command finishes executing, we are ready to run the program, but we won't do it just yet. We got one more step left and that is to install the Spacedesk program, both on our tablet and on our PC. On PC, it will need a firewall permission, so be careful about that as well. After we have done with the installation, we open Spacedesk on our mobile device. It will start searching and once we have opened up on our PC, it will automatically recognize it. 
then all we have to do is basically to connect our PC from mobile. At that point, our tablet will be recognized as a screen. Then we go to display settings and choose the correct resolution so it looks good. Now we are ready to run edX UI. We again head over to its directory and run npm start. Then it should start up on our main screen. To transfer it into our tablet, all we have to do is to use Windows plus Shift and right arrow shortcut. And as you can see, now we get it on our tablet. It is fully functional and we can access terminal, file system and system monitor information. In addition to all of these, if you have remembered in the beginning of this video, I have said that I will be trying it on a different device. And that device is my old Sony Xperia Z phone. It shows its age but it works really well in this application, even so that it works much better compared to my tablet. Anyway, I hope you've liked this video. If that is the case, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing to see more content like this. See you next time. Take care.